Please come. Is she conscious? What? Is she no. conscious? No, she's not conscious. Okay. Please. How many stairs did you what? fall down? Huh? How many stairs? stairs? How many stairs? Uh, Calm down, sir. Uh, Calm down. No, uh, 15, 20, I don't know. Please, get somebody here right away. Please. Okay, somebody's right dispatching the ambulance no, while I ask you questions. It's, it's, it's also the, it's a force field, okay? Please, please. Kathleen Peterson, a Nortel executive and loving mother who was found dead at the bottom of the stairs of her home in Forest Hills Mansion. Her husband, Michael Peterson, who was known as a novelist and a veteran Marine officer. Michael Peterson was also bisexual, and he had many affairs during his relationship with Kathleen. Kathleen Peterson was Michael Peterson's second wife, and they had a seemingly loving marriage and family. Kathleen's body was found by Michael Peterson at 2.40 a.m. on December 9, 2001. He stated that on that evening, they had a wonderful time and stayed up late talking while having some wine. According to Michael Peterson, Kathleen decided to head inside first, and she walked into their house, and that was the last time he saw her alive. Although Michael Peterson denied all of the allegations of killing his wife, he was a suspect in this case. His trial started on July 1, 2003, and he was found guilty on October 10, 2003. There were a few different pieces of forensic evidence brought forward during this case some of which include Michael Peterson's bloody shorts, the amount of blood on Kathleen Peterson's sweatpants, results of the autopsy, the fact that Kathleen did not have any skull fractures or brain swelling, which is unusual in a beating, and the many lacerations to her head that seemed inconsistent with falling down the stairs. But one of the most compelling pieces of evidence that swayed the jury's decision was the blood spatter analysis performed and presented by Agent Dwayne Deaver, a blood spatter analyst from the SVI. Dwayne Deaver stated that by looking at the scene, he can give a minimum of four blows to the head. Deaver stated that in his opinion, Kathleen must have been beaten by someone standing on the outside part of the staircase in order to create the blood pattern on the wall. Dr. Lee, the blood spatter analyst on the defense side, argued that there are no cast-off patterns on the ceiling. If Kathleen was beaten to death, there should be a cast-off pattern as a result of the motion of swinging the weapon. This is what Deaver had to say about the lack of cast-off pattern. Uh, if the weapon were, were swung uh, in, uh, and not a full roundhouse swing, there probably wouldn't be a cast-off. If the weapon had been cleaned in between swings, there wouldn't be a cast-off. Uh, well, let me stop those types there. of things. In other words, <clears throat> if somebody was beating to some, somebody to death and they hit him once, and then they took a towel and wiped down the weapon and then brought it back, then there wouldn't be cast off. Uh, that's correct. Blood patterns can tell the investigators the direction from which blood originated from, the angle of impact and location and position of the victim and the assailant. Details such as the shape of blood droplets can distinguish the angle of impact. For example, the pointed end of a blood stain is the direction from which blood traveled. Blood spatters can be seen on objects such as walls, furnitures, and floors. Cast-off patterns which Deaver claimed was present at the scene is commonly created when a person draws back a bloody object between blows. With cast-off patterns, investigators can measure the minimum number of blows delivered by counting the arcs in blood spatters. Deaver's theory that there was at least four blows aligns with the autopsy that revealed seven lacerations on Kathleen's head. The defense's forensic expert, Dr. Henry Lee, refuted the claims from Agent Deaver, stating that because there is no evidence of blood spatter on the ceiling caused by the swinging motion of a bloody object, the blood on the wall was likely from Kathleen's bloody coughing after her fall. The defense was at a disadvantage because the evidence such as Michael Peterson's clothing were directly sent to Dwayne Deaver, where it was discovered at the second trial that Deaver had mishandled the evidence. He also kept results from a Luma Light test on Michael Peterson's shirt, where it showed no signs of blood spatter. This is important because during an attack, there would have been more evidence of Kathleen's blood on Michael. Due to the falsification of Deaver's qualifications and expertise, the jury was severely influenced by this analysis that helped lead to a positive conviction for Mr. Pearson despite the unknown deficiencies. Due to cases like these, studies have been conducted to examine deficiencies which can primarily be found in the experts brought to the courtroom, like Deaver who was found to have falsified evidence in over 30 cases in his career. The National Academy of Sciences conducted a study in 2009 and ultimately determined that opinions given by blood spatter analysts can be quite subjective and more opinionated over science-based. It is important to have reliable and multifaceted experts when bringing forth these findings in court, 
to avoid inexperience or influence interpretations that lead to wrongful convictions. Agent Deaver used his portfolio of case reports to establish credibility for this case, but he failed to mention his prior evidence misrepresentations amongst his work, and was later fired from the State Bureau of Investigation. Due to Deaver's rocky and dishonorable history, Peterson was granted a new trial on December 6, 2011, but instead chose the Alford plea. This showed there was reasonable evidence that could lead to a conviction, but Peterson wanted to and still does maintain his innocence. The sentence was for 86 months, but Peterson walked free after already serving time for 98 and a half months. For more information, please feel free to check out the Netflix series called The Staircase. Thank you.